Hey, beautiful people. Oh my gosh, you have just tuned in to a very special video. Every Sunday in December, starting December 10th through December 31st, I'm gonna feature an interview that I'm conducting with a child-free married couple or a child-free married person if their husband or wife is not in the video. So I thought this would be very interesting because I know as a child-free person, I get a lot of backlash about being child-free. And I just thought to myself one day, like, I know for certain you know, that child-free married people may get the same type of backlash, if not more. So I just thought to explore, you know, that side of being child-free. And I wanted to bring more diverse content to the channel. So if you're watching this and something resonates with you, feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. Enjoy the video. See you soon. <laughs> So Jenna, thank you so much for being a part of this series here and for, you know, for your energy. And so before we get into our conversation, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself, like where you're from, um, things like that? Sure. Um, I'm Jenna. I am 38. I'm married. I live in uh, about South Central New Hampshire, about one hour from Boston. Um, we've been married for about eight and a half years, together for 11 years. Um, and I work in a dental office part-time. Okay, awesome. And now that you're talking a little bit more, I, I pick up on the Boston accent a lot. <laughs> Do you hear that a lot? I hear it a lot. Yeah, okay. You know, it's funny. Um, this is just so random before we get into the questions and, you know, everything. But I, um, I got maybe five responses from different people that watch my videos. They say that I have an accent um, that reminds them of Beyonce and Kelly Rowland combined. And I had to listen to myself speak. And I'm like, OK, I can kind of see why they say that. <laughs> I can was, definitely hear Kelly Rowland a little bit. OK, <laughs> <laughs> that was so weird. I never heard that until recently, until I started being more um, proactive with my YouTube channel. But anyway, let's get back into you and, you know, your story. So when did you decide to be child free? I don't think it was ever really a decision for me. I think I just kind of always knew I was one of those kids that just never really spent a lot of time with other kids, very independent. I didn't really like baby dolls. Um, my parents didn't really encourage me in any of the usual like kitchen play set or domestic type of stuff. And I just always loved animals more than anything else. And always a huge fan of Barbies. My grandmother collected Barbies for me. Um, so she had one from the year I was born. It was an astronaut Barbie. And then I had a veterinarian Barbie. And I really wanted to be a veterinarian when I was younger. Awesome. Now, are you an only child? I am an only child. Okay. All right. I was just, you know, concerned because, well, I guess intrigued because you said you never um, like to be around other children and things like that. So, yeah. Just I guess I was a little, a little shy and introverted and I still am. I don't get out very much. I don't have a massive social life. Um, I really like to read. So I spend 90% of my free time walking my dogs, playing with them, reading. Um, we like to watch a few different series online and, and on TV. Okay. Awesome. Love it. Yeah. I love to read as well. Um, so regarding, you know, you and your husband, you said you've been married for 11 years together, 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 11 years married for about eight and a half. Okay. Gotcha. So what was that conversation like in the beginning when you, um, kind of spoke with him or vice versa that you, you know, y'all didn't want children? Well, we met a little later in life. Um, we'd better been together about two and a half years when we got married and mm -hmm. I turned 30 the same month. And when we met, he was a little bit older, had just gotten out of a pretty long relationship with another person um, that was actually a little older than him who didn't want kids. And he never really felt a calling to be a dad himself. So on a first date, I just said, you know, we've been friends for six months. I just want to let you know before we get moving forward that I have no real intentions to ever have children. You know, at the time I was 20, 
seven, almost 28. And he kind of seemed relieved, honestly. He was kind of the kind of guy that, you know, he thought that's what people did, but if it didn't happen, he wouldn't be upset about it. So I think he was honestly, like I said, relieved. Wow. You know, you don't hear that too often coming from, from men. So that's- You awful. don't. <laughs> <laughs> I met him and I thought, oh, I lucked out. <laughs> Exactly. I saw a podcast recently where this guy, he just kind of felt offended that a woman didn't want a, a child. He's like, what do you mean you don't want any children? Like, 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 it been, like it's going to benefit him in some kind of way. So I just don't understand some man's logic. <laughs> yeah, well, they're very rarely the primary parent. You know, they're not, they're not carrying the baby. They're not birthing the baby. Most of the time, they're not taking care of the baby. And I know there's going to be examples, um, you know, exemptions to every rule. But yeah, I mean, a lot of men seem to see it as like a rite of passage or a sign of how of their masculine virility. And I don't think that considering most men will just throw money at problems instead of taking care of a child. And that's why I see so many relationships with people getting divorced after having kids and things like that. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, you mentioned something too that kind of really stood out for me was that you talked about, you know, you not wanting children on the first date. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I kind of maybe go back and forth about whether I want to talk about it on the first date or kind of wait. But I think that's a great strategy to just lay the cards out on the table in the beginning. And that way you can see if you're compatible or not. So that was really smart. Yeah, I think it might have been a little different for us because we were friends for about six months before we started dating. So I really did know him pretty well. And I wasn't afraid or, you know, worried about how he would react. But I also knew that I wasn't willing to settle for someone who wanted kids because it just wasn't going to work out. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Now, how do you handle um, other people that may not agree with your child free choice, whether it's family, uh, maybe co-workers or just whomever? Well, it really depends. I have a couple different ways that I handle it. If I am dealing with people who just can't get it through their head and they are constantly questioning me or they're even hostile, I will generally just make it a blank statement. It's just not what I want and move on. With people that I know and love and care about, family members, and when I first met my in-laws, my um, sister-in-law has two kids and my uh, excuse me, my, my mother-in-law really wanted more grandchildren. Um, but I told her very early on that I was not planning to have kids. And um, I think that, you know, just being honest up front and kind of blunt about it has been the easiest way for me to deal with it. I, I don't sugarcoat things. I don't make up excuses. I don't say, oh, I love children, but it's just not for me. I normally have just said that kids are great, but they're not for me. I don't particularly like to spend time around children. I love my niece and my nephew. I love my friend's kids for a little bit, but I just get tired really easily and frustrated really easily and can't handle the noise and the smells and the overwhelming, overstimulating yeah. movement. And it's just too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always tell people I can tolerate children. Two reasons, if they're well-behaved and if they're either four or five and up, like babies, the crying to me, it sounds like nails on a chalkboard. Oh God. That's exactly how I describe it. Nails on the chalkboard. Yes. And yeah, I just can't see myself. I think it'll, you know, be detrimental to my mental health for me to take care of a, a baby, a toddler. Like I said, they have to be able to be potty trained and feed themselves for me to babysit and be around them for a long time. <laughs> you know, I, I spend time with my coworkers who are great and they tell me, these horror stories of things that they go through on a daily basis. And then they always end it with, but it's so worth it. And I say, I'm great. I I'm so glad that it, it works for you, but I know for me, it just wouldn't work out. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I feel the same way. Um, so let's talk about the dynamics of your, you know, your relationship or your marriage as a result of being child free. Um, what, you know, what type of things has benefited you from being child free and married? Well, I think that it's been great that even though we're 11 years into our relationship, we are pretty much on the same place where we started. You know, 
every relationship has a honeymoon phase. But, you know, when I just think about my husband, even after being in a relationship with him for 11 years, it's just like so gross how much I love him. And we just have each other and we put our energy and our time and our love into each other. And there's nobody, there's nobody getting in between us. There's, um, there's less stressors. I feel like it's really allowed us to have time alone and have financial stability. And I know that a huge relationship problem is, is money, you know, so I, and I've been in those situations. I'm just very lucky and and very blessed to be with somebody who didn't want to have kids as well. And I know that our relationship is stronger for it. Awesome. I love that. And, um, you know, I did an interview with someone before her video was posted, I think a couple of weeks before this one, Mm -hmm. but she shared that, you know, one day she was just having a really bad week at work and her husband just booked a spontaneous trip for the weekend so they could, you know, decompress. And I love that. Yeah. She shared that there's no way they could have done that with a child. They would have had to find a babysitter and pack a car seat or, you know, all, all the little details, but yeah, that's right. a benefit as well. You know, I just, just love being spontaneous and just going where I want to go. I love coming home from one job, knowing I'm not going to another. And I love coming home, knowing that my husband isn't stressed about if I picked kids up from daycare or if we're in a good school district or things like that. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, I recently made the move from Atlanta, Georgia here. It's currently Phoenix mm-hmm. um, in the middle of the year, like you just mentioned, without having to look for a, a specific school district or waiting until the school year was out <laughs> so that the child can adjust, you know, accordingly. But yeah, it's just, really so many benefits to being child free. Um, yeah, not only you know being child free and married, but myself being child free and single. So yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Now, um, what advice do you have for child free married couples or engaged, you know, whether they're, they've made up their mind that they wanna be child free or if they're on the fence? Honestly, I would say if you're not like me who just kind of always knew if you were a fence sitter or if you've gone through fertility treatments, you know, you just have to look at the quality of your life and make a pros and cons list. For me, that's, you know, making lists have always been a big thing. You have to decide what amount of stress that you're willing to take in your life. And as a a chronically ill person myself, I have to keep a very low level of stress. So I've dated people in the past that have wanted kids and you know, I've, I've just had to be honest with them. It's, it's not going to happen. So I would say, don't settle. If you're not sure, really think about it. You need to know if, if what you're going to go through is going to be worth the end result. And some people have kids because they think it's just what they're supposed to do, but it's 2023. It's almost 2024. There is no life script anymore. You need to make your own way. Yes. Great point. Great advice. I love that. My, that's definitely a mic drop. What you you know just said. You there's no specific rules to life. You know, just live it to according to what's gonna make you happy, and forget about what society says and you know what you should be doing in terms of you know building a family. A family can consist of you and your, you and your husband, you and your wife, you and your dogs, whatever. So right. Thank you for mentioning that. And this, yeah, this was a great conversation. Thank you so much again for, for your time, for your energy. Of course. Love the background. It's so pretty. I thought it was a Zoom background at first. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, again, thank you so much. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome.